Hello, in this video we look at Merton's Theorem, which deals with the product of two series. Um, we'll need two background videos for this video. One I called the Cauchy product, and the other is conditional and absolute convergence. So the theorem is this. If we have two series, AN and BN, and they're convergent with one, at, you know, at least one absolutely convergent, then the Cauchy product of the series converges to A times B, where A is the limit of the series A in, and B is the limit of the series B in. <coughs> so the proof goes like this. So assume A is absolutely convergent. So we, you know, we have to pick one, and then we'll assume B in is conditionally convergent. Uh, since it's convergent, we know that it's bounded, right? And that'll play a part later in the proof. Then given epsilon greater than zero, we, we know two things. One, there exists an N1 such that when we're when N is greater than N1, we know that the that the series from N to infinity of the absolute value of AKs is less than zero. And so what what this means is it's that as we're adding up infinitely many terms, these the tail end of this better be pretty darn small so it can converge. And at some point it becomes so small that every term, if we add up every term after it, it's less than some very small number epsilon. That's what this says. And, and it's absolutely convergent, so that's why we can put the absolute value signs there. And two, there exists an N2 such that being greater than N2, that this series is less than epsilon, which is also true. If this series converges, then those terms get really small. They have to, you know, they limit to zero. And then at some point, all the terms past, say, N2, if we add them up, it's still less than epsilon. The, all the other terms, you know, the tail terms are insignificant. So let's let N3 be the maximum of N1 and N2, and let's let M be twice as big as N3. Now, we want to show that this can be made arbitrarily small, right? Because this is the Cauchy product, and this is A times B. And so we're saying this is the limit of this. So we've picked an epsilon, and we've picked a, an N. We're going to call it N3, or it's actually two times N3. And then every number bigger than that, you know, as we go to infinity, this become these becomes very small, meaning this limits to that. So here, the series we can expand to, the, you know, the infinite series from zero to infinity on both of those. Then, uh, background video one, we show that this can be rewritten like this. So really, this is kind of in in this video BV one. It's, this is, is one way of thinking about the product of two series, and this is actually another way to think about the product of two series. They're equivalent. You know, if you add left to right or right to left or diagonally, it doesn't matter because you're adding up things. And so this can be rewritten like this, but we do that because of the next step. We are going to add zero. So we add and subtract the same thing to our uh, e e equation. Now we can combine these. It goes from zero to m of a k, right? So we can we can co factor that out and, and then combine those all under the inequality. But then when we do use the triangle inequality, then it gets bigger than. So these two become this, right? The a k, and then this goes from zero. 0 to infinity minus 0 to m minus k. And then over here, we have the infinite series from 0 to infinity of bk. So we can factor that out, and we get this. Okay. And then again, we use the triangle inequality. Well, now we, now we start simplifying. Somehow we have to bound these by something really, really small. So to go from here to here, we just uh, um, we just subtract off the first n minus k term. So we go from m minus k plus one to infinity. 
So these two terms become this. Here we do the same thing. We go from m plus 1 to infinity of these. Right? This stays the same. This stays the same. Now, this term, we go from 0 to m. But in between 0 and m is n3. Right? Because m was twice 2 times n3. So if we split this and go from 0 to n3, and then n3 plus 1 to m, we have two terms in here. Then we use the triangle inequality. And so this, this becomes this. And over here, it's the absolute value of a sum, which says then you can take it in and, and it becomes less than or equal to. And that's what we do here. So, But then we have the product of two numbers. So we just take the absolute value of each of them individually. Then here, because um, BJ is a convergent sequence and we're way out in the tail, this actually is less than epsilon. So if we put in epsilon here, it actually just made this, this get a little bit bigger. Right? Now over here, we do the since it's the absolute value of the sum, you can take it into there, you know, to, and then it becomes less than or equal to. And then it's the product, so you can look at them individually. Um, this here, we just bring down. Now, because, so this term, it's posit the epsilon is positive, we can take it out front. So that's what we get here. Now, if we look at this number, it's finite, right? Because it's, con I mean, not finite, it's bounded. So, you know, so we can bind, bound this by some number m in a strategic way. And the next line will, will illustrate what that is. Um, but then this comes down and that's bounded by m. And the same way here, this can be bounded by m. And the way we do that is for this series, um, we look at the supremum. So we go from 0 to infinity, 1 to infinity, 2 to infinity, and we're getting numbers along the way. Then we take the supremum, the least upper bound. <coughs> and that's what we put there. And we can do that because this is, it's, um, it's convergent, so it's bounded, and which means that there is a least upper bound for this. So now, uh, this term here, so, th so this we won't mess with. And the M is not indexed, so it can come out front. But then uh, AK is absolutely convergent, and we are so far down the tail that adding up, um, let me rephrase that. So th it's absolutely convergent, and we are really far down the tail. So if we go from zero to infinity, as opposed to M, now, we, we do that because M is in our original, um, it's right here. And so eventually we have to take the limit as M goes to infinity to show that converges. So we, we kind of have to get rid of um, this M. And we do that because we can add in even more terms and it, this gets a little bit bigger. We've made it bigger. But, but the M stays the same, and this piece we have yeah, made a little bit bigger because we're taking absolute values, positive numbers. Now, this, um, we just keep the same. But because, and, and now this we keep the same, and because A, N, you know, this is an absolutely convergent sequence, and we are so far in the tail that adding all these up is less than epsilon. The same way here, that's less than epsilon. Well, we can factor out an epsilon from each term, and then this, you know, the absolute value, it comes down, and we get 2m. Well, m is a constant, and, and we're only summing up finitely many terms, so this is a constant, so this is a constant, you know, the addition of them both, and we're taking it times epsilon, which is a really small number. So we can make this arbitrarily small just based on epsilon. So we can make this approach zero as epsilon goes to zero, 
which then says our original difference goes to zero, which says that this Cauchy product limits to A times B. Boom. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.